Welcome back to the channel. I'm sure that by now you figured out how to throw a disc 450 feet. You're making all your circle one putts, but now it's time to focus on how to make those circle two putts, those pesky 35 to 65 footers that if you can knock down a couple of those per round or a couple more of those per round, you can really improve your scores. It's a big part of the game, it comes up frequently. So today we're gonna jump into a few quick tips on how to do so. Let's get into it. So there are three basic options that you have in terms of form when moving outside of circle one and how to putt C2 and beyond. The first of those is to just keep your normal putting form and to just putt harder or putt aim harder while going higher and farther right so that the disc has more space and time to hyzer in. If that's you, that's great. A lot of professionals choose to go that route, so you've got good company there. Sit with us, because I'm gonna go over how to step putt and how to jump putt for those who want a little more action in their circle two putting. Now these alternative options that I'm talking about, a lot of pros also use, so you're not in bad company if you choose to do one of these. The first one that I wanna talk about is a step putt, and that's where, as the name implies, you step while you putt. You're gonna start by putting, if you're right-handed, I'm just gonna to speak to the right-handed folks, left-handed people, you're probably used to this, you're just gonna to have to flip everything that I say in this video. You're gonna put your right foot at the marker, and then as you bring the disc down, you start to bring your left, you start to bring your left leg forward and get out over where your marker is. So, if your mark is right here, your left leg is gonna be hanging out here, but it's gonna be up in the air. You don't want it to touch the ground or that's a footfall. So you're going to bring your left leg forward and then right before your left foot hits the ground, as you're pushing forward, you're gonna snap the disc towards the basket. Now, this is good because it gets you out over your marker legally, so you're closer to the basket. You also have momentum going towards the basket. And I think that step putts and jump putts are really helpful because they allow you to keep your same form, your same everything, aim point, arm speed, whatever, as you have in that comfortable, whatever range is comfortable for you, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet. You can keep that same pace and everything and you're just pushing towards the target, letting your legs and body give you momentum to give you that extra speed to push the disc the rest of the way towards the basket. The third option, the second of the alternatives, but the third option for how to approach circle two and beyond putting is to jump putt. And I'm gonna be candid, this is the best. <laughs> this is the way that I choose. It's not necessarily the best, pick whatever's right for you, blah, 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 this is the best. Jump putting is where you stand behind your marker and then as you go forward, instead of bringing your left leg forward, some people put their right foot forward, enough about step putting. Instead of bringing your leg forward and pushing yourself forward that way, you're gonna bring both legs together and jump towards the basket. This can be done from a stagger putt you can see Paul Macbeth did this for a little while. Other people do it as well. You can stagger putt and kind of hop forward. That was a big hop. Most of the time it's just a, a smaller little push to get you there. Or you can go look at the Kevin Jones of the world that will get down into a straddled stance and then push straight at the basket from a straddle stance. This is my favorite way to putt. I would rather have a 35 foot jump putt that I can straddle and jump at than I then have a 30 foot putt that I have to stand still on. I'm sure a lot of you either are the same or you will be the same if you try this out. Now it's important to remember when you're jump putting and when you're step putting too, 
for that matter, you have to have contact with the ground behind your marker and not in front of your marker when you release the disc. You do not get to do one of these sorts of putts. Now that putt was illegal for multiple reasons. Obviously I was inside circle one, but I just wanna highlight, you can't just Superman putt, <laughs> fly through the air and then drop it in when you're halfway through the circle. That is illegal. You have to have a point of contact behind your marker upon your release. If you're step putting or if you're jump putting, my, my strong recommendation to you is try to keep your eyes about on the same level throughout your putt. You don't want to be spending all of your energy just jumping up into the air <laughs> and then throwing out. And similarly, with your step putting, you don't want to be pushing up real high. You want to try to keep these putts straight at the target and keep your same normal putt like you would have from C1 out to about whatever range is comfortable for you. For me, it's about that 45 to 50 foot mark before I have to start changing the height and the angle and all that. So other considerations, some people like using different putters from C1 and C2. Again, I think this introduces too much variance into what you're doing. Some people swear they have success with it, so I'm gonna let it ride if you like doing that. Particularly, the choice is typically to throw a glidier, less stable putter than your C1 putter. So theoretically, when you're putting from 45, 50, maybe 60 feet out, this should stay straighter on line with your target than the fresher or more stable putter. It's totally up to you. It's a point of preference. I like trying to keep the same disc in my hand to learn it really well. And if this is not stable enough for my C1 putts, I don't like it for my C2 putts. The farther you get away from the basket is you have to change your putt more and more, change the way that it feels, change your angle, change your height, release point, all of these things. It's probably a good idea to give it a softer and softer run as you get more and more uncomfortable about actually putting the disc in the bucket. That way, if somehow you miss, you have a shorter tap in comeback or putt than just full force sending something from 60, 70 feet and then having to make a 25 or 30 foot comeback or on the way back in. You don't want to turn those birdie looks into bogey looks. It doesn't feel good, doesn't look good on a scorecard. Nobody likes it. And remember, these C2 putts or your C2 putting style doesn't always have to just be used to put the disc into the basket. It can be a really useful approach tool as well. Take, for example, the hole behind me. I have a tree on the left and the right. I have a bit of a ceiling with the branches overhanging it. So I don't have much room to really throw something. I don't want to be really touchy with a throw or a backhand or a forehand. I need something that just goes straight the way that a putt would provide. I'm not trying to make it. Now I have a seven foot tap in instead of having to make a 15 or 20 foot putt. And to go along with that point, the more comfortable and the more confident you are in that 20 to 30 foot range, the better of a circle two putter you're going to be. And not only because you can use that same great 20 to 30 foot putting stroke with your newfound step putt or jump putt, if you choose to use one of those, but also because now from circle two, you can again be more confident to really put it at the basket because you know if you go 15, 20, maybe even 25 feet long, you're gonna step up, and you're gonna nail that circle one putt. So it may seem like a strange piece of advice, but probably the best way to improve your circle two putting is to improve your circle one putting. If you miss your circle two, you have a circle one putt, and if you're confident that you'll knock that down, it'll transfer over, whether it's at the forefront of your mind or subconsciously, it'll transfer over when you're putting those circle two looks as well. Thank you all for watching the video. If you've made it to this point, please leave a like and comment, let us know, are you a jump putter? Are you a step putter? Do you just like to stand still and putt as far as you possibly can? And let me know why. I'm still learning myself. I love to hear what the community is doing and the rationale behind it. Let us know what sorts of videos you want to see next and then subscribe so that you can see them. We've got tips videos like this, disc reviews, some tournament coverage, a lot of fun things coming down the pipeline for y'all. If you need some discs, go check us out at armorydiscgolf.com and equip yourself for whatever the course may throw at you. Come see us again, and until then, fight the good fight.